Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It's really wonderful to see all of you. Thank you for coming out. Um, I hope you've been enjoying our amazing weather swings in Colorado. We had some lovely 60s weather and sunny, and then it was snowy. But I was telling Mike, isn't it awesome that it's snowing on like Fridays and Saturdays? Because it doesn't affect school and it doesn't affect church. And Mike's like, you're not the one shoveling, are you? I was like, no. But, it, but if it's got to snow, you know, Saturday's a good day. So <laughs> I'm happy we can all come together for, for church. Um, today, uh, my topic is Foundation Day and I. Uh, this week we celebrated the birthdays of our founders, Reverend and Mrs. Moon, uh, both born on the sixth day of the first month of the lunar calendar, and also the 11th anniversary of Foundation Day. And um, I use th this title, Foundation Day and I, and it's a little bit of a callback to In the Divine Principle, our faith text, there's a number of sections where you go really deep into the history of the providence of restoration and you learn all about Adam and Eve and Noah and Moses and Jacob and Esau and it's like a lot of history and a lot of content. But at the end of the section, there's a little part that says the history of restoration and I. So what does it have to do with me? What is my role in relation to all this? And so I, I'm kind of taking that approach to Foundation Day because, um, you know, Foundation Day was an event, happened 11 years ago, and we're commemorating it. And I think a lot of times we, we celebrate an anniversary of something because it was meaningful at the time, or like the 4th of July, the independence of America. And, but sometimes we don't also necessarily translate in, that into what does that mean for me today, you know? So, um, so I wanted to kind of talk about what does Foundation Day mean for me and does it have any relevance to my daily life as it is? So Foundation Day was, uh, took place in 2013, I think in February, and I don't know what was happening in your life at that time. Uh, for me, it was a very kind of tumultuous and difficult time. Just a few months prior to Foundation Day is when our founder, Reverend Moon, our, the husband, passed away. And for many of us in this faith, it was very sad, um, difficult, hard to see what's happening, why is this happening, time. Um, I had just given birth to Mia, so I was taking care of a little baby, not getting much sleep at night. Um, at, we were offering some kind of a condition at that point. I think we were doing bows, like 120 bows a day, and I was really struggling with them. <laughs> For one thing, the reason I had started the condition was to support True Father's health, but he had already passed away, so part of me was like, why am I still doing this? But I committed to do it, and so I was trying to do it, but uh, anyway, I was, I was in this kind of a funk. And so in the moment when the foundation day came, I, I didn't feel a lot of the value of it, or I wasn't very excited by it. I was just trying to get through day by day. But the meaning of Foundation Day, as I understood it, was that everything in history up to that point, all of the efforts of saints and sages and central figures and the life and sacrifice even of our true parents and even many, and even ourselves up to 2013 was just laying a foundation for God's kingdom to come on this earth. It was restoration. It was paying indemnity. It was like throwing, all the efforts were like throwing rocks into a deep ocean, 
and you'd throw a rock, you'd make an offering, you'd make a sacrifice, you'd try really hard, and you'd throw your rock, and it would just disappear under the surface and sink to the bottom. And you maybe necessarily couldn't see what was happening under the surface, and the rocks that you threw fell on top of the rocks that had been, thousands of rocks that had been thrown by people who came before us, and they were building up under the surface, but it was still under the surface. It looked like it disappeared. The way I understood Foundation Day was that that is the day when we break the surface. We break even. Humanity fell away from God and slowly has been working our way with God's help, with the help of Jesus, with the help of central figures, back to the place before we fell. And Foundation Day is like, we finally made it back to that spot. And not only did we make it, there's a foundation. All of these efforts, all this intention, all these offerings are now the, the cornerstone or the foundation for us to substantially build God's kingdom on earth. And from that day forward, every offering we make, everything we restore, every God-centered relationship we build is like a brick on this foundation. It's something that's visible. It's something substantial. We're not throwing rocks that disappear under the surface anymore. We're actually building God's kingdom. So that's how I understand Foundation Day. Be right before the establishment of Foundation Day, after Reverend Moon had already passed away, his wife, Hak Jahan Moon, true mother, um, gave a speech to the young people of our movement. And I wanted to share a good section of it. It's about eight slides worth, so I hope you can stick with me as I go through it. But I find it very meaningful. And surprisingly, when I went to go visit her in Las Vegas this past fall, I found that the words were actually almost identical to each other. She's saying the same things. So let me start with her words that she gave before, right before Foundation Day. Consider for a moment God's creation of the universe. He began creating the world on the first day into the second day and so on, thinking all the while about his ideal nation. For whom did he do that? It was for Adam and Eve, his son and daughter. He was creating the environment for them, who would grow up to become his body as a true parent. The creation of the environment is not something that can be done easily. When you create something in line with your own character, you have to go through labor pains and devote yourself to the task. It is not as easy as saying you want to make something and saying, Rose, you will look like this, and then suddenly having a fully formed rose. Am I right? Even though heaven showed such devotion, what happened after that? God had a dream, but why did human beings who were created with so much care fall? Though you have listened to the divine principle lectures tens or hundreds of times, it is a pity that those teachings do not hit home for you and you cannot translate them into action. You stand at the center of the Unification Church. You need to look back on yourselves and figure out where you should go from here, of your own accord, without my having to explain everything to you. That is why I told you not to be arrogant, but to live with a grateful heart. When you can find it in your heart to be truly grateful in front of heaven and your brothers and sisters, you can find peace. You can become free. You can break free from your chains. Perhaps you and your parents haven't known of this wonderful truth, but do you catch the sense of what I am saying? This is only the beginning, right? Foundation day is only the beginning. How can we bear fruit if we have not even begun? We need to sow in order to reap. You need to clearly understand this. To do that, you need to do your best and show God and the world what you can do. 
What you can achieve from now on will depend on the effort you make. And then, when I went to Las Vegas and heard her speak again, these are the words that she said, which I find mirror almost exactly what she said before. Regarding the question of how we can rebuild this earth to its original state of serving our heavenly parent, you must become skilled in every field and use your sincerity, effort, and wisdom so that you can overcome all these difficulties and create a beautiful earth. I hope that you will be able to create it back to its original form. To do that, you must know for sure who you are. Because there are many cloudy waters in the world, you must clearly know your identity and know that your responsibility as pure water is to walk straight ahead without interference from those around you towards the wider world. And here's another little snippet. Heaven waits until the baby grows up and is able to judge things for itself, understands the will of God, and makes a determination. So the similarities that I find in these quotes is one, that she's talking about, for one, the environment of the world that we're in, that it was created by God with love and investment, but due to the fall, we need to bring creation back to its original glory. We need to bring this world back to its original plan. But she's not telling us exactly how to do it. She's saying, you know, use your skills, use your intuition. You already know, you, in your, the depth of your heart and in your original mind, in your original nature, you already know who you are, what your strengths are, what you have to offer. And use your wisdom to bring that to fruition. We're just beginning, but we need to start sowing those seeds of our talents and our, what we have to offer to this world. But I, a lot of it, I feel like, has to do with, at Foundation Day, I feel like it was true parents are now handing us ownership and responsibility. Before, we heard a lot of things like, even if you don't know what's happening, just hold on to my, just hold on to my hand, hold on to the, my coattails, just don't let go, you know, and we'll, and, and we'll get you there. But I feel like your mother is saying here, you, you're old enough now. I'm going to let go of your hand now. I've given you everything you need. So what are you going to create? What are you going to build in God's kingdom? So, considering that, I think it's a good time for reflection. If we think back to the beginning of, what was it, February 2013, 11 years ago, where were we then, and where are we now? What building blocks did we add to God's kingdom in the last 11 years. What can I say, this was my offering during this time? Have you had growth in your eternal relationships? Because I think that's a really strong building block in God's kingdom. Have you overcome a resentment to your parents? Have you establish a deep and loving relationship with your spouse? Have you learned how to love your children unconditionally, even when they reject you, when they disobey you? These things are the main things that people in this world struggle with. And those that inability to do those things is what perpetuates the difficulty in our world. But when we overcome and we, we're like, I'm proclaiming, this is my true family. 
I love my parents with filial piety. I love my spouse unconditionally. I give love unconditionally to my children. That's like a big building block we're setting on the foundation. Or has there been a time in the last 11 years when you've repented for a mistake that you made? Have you asked for forgiveness from someone that you've hurt? And have you made a fresh start in an area of your life? If so, claim that. Put your brick on the foundation. Because every substantial offering that we make from 11 years ago till today and from today on, however big or small, is a substantial is, is substantially building God's kingdom. When we overcome an addiction or a bad habit that we've been struggling with, we have to have confidence that this is a seed that is sowed that will have ripple effects for decades to come, for hundreds of years to come, for generations to come. This is a quote from our true father. This was actually shortly before he passed away. This is from, he actually titled this speech, My Last Words for Humankind. They weren't his actual last words. He talked a lot in the last few months of his life. But, uh, but it was significant, because he felt, this is something I have to offer. He says, I have already mentioned that a life of vertical noontime alignment casts no shadow. So he often referred to this as the time of high noon, when the sun is directly above and there's no shadow cast. If we can all shine as we live such glowing lives, there will be no chance for the shadow of sin to be cast. Those who receive the light will be indebted to the light. I pray that we can now wipe away the tears of people in misery and poverty and lead an illuminated life of eternal true love that dissipates all darkness. So I think that one thing that we need to do if we are really living in the era of building God's kingdom is that we can no longer pretend to be godly people. We can no longer just put our best face forward and hope that that's all people see and that they don't see the things that we've swept under the rug or hidden behind us to really sow seeds that will result in real fruit, we need to live a life of high noon. So my encouragement is that even now, 11 years later, if there's anything that we feel, oh, I hope nobody sees this about myself, or God, I love you, but, but you know, just don't look over there, that this is a time where we can just open it all up. God knows we're not perfect. The people closest to us know we're not perfect. So why are we trying to pretend that we are? Right? Let's be genuine. Let's be honest. Because when light shines into the darkest places, that's when we can actually dissipate the darkness. Right? If we try to keep something hidden and the light never touches it, then things fester, bad feelings. That's how, that's how disease and sickness festers, right? If we keep, if we, keep a, if we have an infection and we just keep it covered and we don't let the fresh air in and we don't let the sunlight in, it only gets worse and it eats away at us from the inside. And it's the same thing in our lives. If we have a part of our life that we're hiding or a part of a character we don't want anybody to see and we just pretend it's not there, it only grows and festers out of sight. But in a time of high noon, we can't hide any of that. So, why do, so let's not try. Right? Let's open up. Let's air out the dirty laundry and clean up. This reminds me of a quote from Psalms. Search me, O God 
and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I love this vulnerability to God. Like, here I am. Sometimes we're not even aware of the things that we're hiding, but I love this. It's like, God, look at me. Make, help me become aware if there's something that I need to change. I'm an open book. I really believe that it's in these moments when we can be vulnerable with God and also with others that we can have major shifts in our life. I know that there's been times in my life where I didn't even realize that I was hiding something or holding on to something for years. But then there was kind of a moment of illumination, whether it was some, some, something that happened in my life that shed light on like, oh, actually, I've really been holding on to this resentment toward my parents, or I, I'm actually really selfish in this way, and I never really thought about it, but I am. And it was like the light kind of shone on it, and I realized I can't keep going forward like this. I actually don't feel like I can move forward in my life until I let go of this, or until I ask for forgiveness for this. Um, I remember, I think I've shared this story before, but I have a friend who I was very good friends with for many years. We had met each other on our missions program, and I felt like a close brother and sister bond with this person. Um, but then, at one point, I said something very harsh to my friend. He came to me and he was being vulnerable, sharing about a difficult situation in his life, and I kind of judged him for it, and it really hurt him. And I tried to just kind of play it off, like, oh, well, I didn't really mean to hurt you. Um, and, I, and I kind of half-heartedly apologized, but kind of making a joke out of it at the same time. I'm telling you, those apologies never work. You can't joke about an apology to somebody. <laughs> That didn't work. And I kind of gave up on it after a while. I was like, I, you know, he didn't accept my apologies, and I said what I said, and I just had to move on with my life. And then uh, it was like three or four years later, and I was doing this self-development program with Landmark, and, and it was just like a light shone on that spot. It was like, here's one of your faults. <laughs> And you were actually not who you want to be in that moment. You were mean. You were mean-spirited. And I had to look at myself as like, is that who I say I am? I don't like to think of myself as that kind of a person. But here's the evidence of what I did. And so I had to, I really just had to kind of sit with that for a little bit and be like, no, I, that's not who I want to be. And I don't feel like I can, you know, uh, keep going forward pretending that I'm not unless I take care of this. And so I had to really take a deep breath, call my friend, like, don't hang up on me, please. I just had to say something. And I'm so sorry for what I said. So all those years ago, I realize now that I shouldn't have said it. Even if in my mind I felt like that was was right, that's not the time to say that. <laughs> like, I, I realized that I should not have, and, I, and I, now I realize how much it hurt you that I said that, and I'm sorry. And the person was like, I'll call you back. He like had to, he couldn't respond in the moment. He was like, let me think about this for a minute. But he called me back, he was like, okay, I accept your apology. Let's be friends. <laughs> but, you know, we have those times in our life where I think many times we try to forget about them. We try to forget about a time when we said something very hurtful to a friend, to our parents, to our spouse. And we think, well, if I just move forward, then, and I, then it kind of negates that, or I can pretend it didn't happen. But to live in a life of high noon, 
we, we have to uncover all those stones. We have to shed light on all those areas. But what I love about Foundation Day is that it's a reminder that for everything we restore from here on out, every time we do uncover one of those stones and let the light in, every time we do give unconditional love to our spouse or our child or restore a relationship, we are placing a stone on the foundation of God's kingdom. We are, in actuality, building God's kingdom. So I love it because it's a reminder, not just of an event that happened 11 years ago, but it's a reminder that I have power now to do something for God. Another thing, I, I don't want to forget this, another thing that True Mother is always talking about in her speeches is to witness. And I have to say, I'm one of the first people who, when I hear the word witness, I get this like knee-jerk reaction, like, mm. I, I've done that before and I don't have any spiritual children out of it and that was a lot of effort and it was very uncomfortable and I don't want to do that. But something that I feel has been emphasized a lot recently is, first of all, we need to be a witness to ourselves. What are we missing in our own life of faith where we feel shaky? Is there something I'm not confident in? Is there something where, like, I kind of believe this, but I don't really know how much I do, and we feel like we're on shaky ground? It's okay. But if there is, how can I witness to myself first? What can I do to solidify the ground that I'm standing on? And then another way I like to put this perspective is I don't need to go out witnessing, but I need to be a witness. I need my life to be a testimony to God's work. If, when I am in the world, if people feel God's love through me, then I am succeeding. So I, 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 that's how I kind of turn it. Like wherever I go and whatever I do, I want there to be evidence of God's work in my life because people want that too. And I find myself with the people that I know who are not part of our church community, I find myself kind of making this it's like casting a net, a net of love, and, and connecting people, and finding ways to bring them into our family's loving relationship, or our community in some way or form, and I, and I find that little by little, people get closer and closer, and they get more comfortable, and they feel love through being with me and my family. They feel love when they come to a, a community event at church. And that is how I, I feel I can resonate with what your mother is saying. Who you are will come out in the things that you do. So then the question is, if you're not happy with the results that you're seeing in your life, first ask the question, is there something that I need to change in my own integrity, or my own faith, or my own family? Because who I am will have results in the things that I do. And the awesome thing is that a breakthrough in these very personal areas of our life will set you up for breakthroughs in other areas, whether it's in your witnessing, in your business, in the, whatever personal projects you have in our life, I find that it's very closely correlated to what, how solid we are in our relationships with our family and with God. I know that there are people who have like meteoric success in business or different aspects of their life in, in creation and art and entertainment, but I find that without our solid foundation, 
Many times you can ex attain extreme heights, but then you can fall very, very, very far. But that's not the kind of success we're looking for. We're looking for a real success on God's foundation, which starts in myself, starts in my family. So what do we want to, what bricks do we want to put in God's kingdom this year? What offering do I want to make? And the beautiful thing about rem remembering Foundation Day is knowing that e however big or however small, this is substantial. It's not going, it's, we're not filling up the hole. We're not throwing rocks into the ocean. Whatever offering we make from our real heart that's, that's sincere will have real results in our own life and into the future. So take a minute to, to reflect. I would, I would imagine God's love is like the sun above us and shining all around us. Is there something that we're trying to hide? Is there a shadow that we're trying to prevent the light from hitting? And if there is, Maybe talk to God about it today. And if necessary, maybe talk to somebody else about it today. Maybe there's a mentor. Maybe there's a resource you can use to shed light on those areas. Because I have found that when, when I identify these areas and when I dissipate the darkness through a real action, like for example, that one time when I asked for forgiveness from my friend, it's like a weight has been taken off, or chains, right? True Mother said, these chains, we didn't even know we were living with them. Where is it? Here it is. When you can be truly grateful in front of heaven and your brothers and sisters, you can find peace. You can become free, and you can break free from your chains. But, and then she says, but you didn't know this until now. Some of you didn't realize this. But when we know it, we can break free from our chains. And maybe we didn't even realize we're holding us back. But when we let go of them, we, we realize how much lighter we are and how much more freedom we have to do the things that we want to do. So um, I hope that this is helpful in kind of breaking down why we celebrate Foundation Day because we have a lot of holidays in our faith and we have a lot of days on the calendar and they don't maybe, I don't know if they mean something for everybody. I know for myself it's hard to connect to each one but I really feel like Foundation Day does have a significant meaning, not only for the day that it was established, but it has ongoing meaning for how we live our daily life now as an offering. So please join me in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Parent, good morning. Thank you for a beautiful Sunday and for all of those gathered here today. And for those who aren't, Heavenly Parent, we send our love and we pray that they can also feel the warmth of your love illuminating their lives, and I pray that we can begin to uncover the aspects of our life that we are still ashamed of, or that we are afraid of, or we don't know what will happen if we were to look closely at them, and I pray that we can just trust that you are our loving heavenly parent, and that you only have good things in store for us when we live according to your will. So I pray that we can open up our hearts to you, open up our lives to you. We can let go of the things that are holding us back. We can restore those mistakes that we have made, or we can forgive people who've hurt us. We can ask forgiveness from those we've hurt. And from that point, Heavenly Parent, we will be freed to move forward quickly in our lives and to 
add bricks to the building of your kingdom, Heavenly Parent, and knowing that even if we don't see the establishment of the kingdom of heaven in our own lifetime, that we, our efforts are real and our efforts are substantial and that it is only laying the foundation for, those, for our children and for our children's children to continue building and we can little by little see the beauty of what you envisioned at the beginning of creation coming to this earth. Thank you so much for the love you've given us in so many ways through this beautiful creation, through all the saints and sages of history, through Jesus, through our true parents, through our own parents and the people in our life. I pray that just like True Mother encourages us that we can find gratitude. Even if we have difficulties in our life, if we can live with gratitude, we can find ways to break free of our chains. So we offer this time to you, this celebration of your parents' birthday and foundation day to you, and I offer this prayer in my name, Michael and Donia Hendrick, a blessing to your family. Amen and adieu. Okay, thank you so much.